Hi everyone, welcome back again to my little floor setup here. Uh, if you're new here, hi, I'm Morgan. I do not always film sitting on my floor like this, but I got a lot of really wonderful feedback on some of my recent videos where I'm sitting down here. Uh, if you are new here, please consider subscribing to my channel down below. I would really appreciate it and would love to have you join us all here on my channel. So today I am talking through a bunch of brands that I have my eye on. So as you probably know by now, I am transitioning my makeup collection to all cruelty-free products. And that's gonna be a transition, it's gonna take a while, but while I still have my non-cruelty-free products, I want to try to find dupes and comparisons for them while I can compare them side by side. And these brands have certain products that I'm either interested in just because I'm curious about them or products that I think could be dupes for things that I currently own that I need to find a replacement for before I run out. I have these broken down all into two categories and one is high-end, AKA more expensive. And one is what I'm calling affordable. All right, so first up in the high-end category is Aether Beauty. And I am just intrigued by this company as a whole. I'm not trying to replace any of my products with their products. I just am fascinated by this company. So let me just list some stuff here. They're cruelty-free, vegan, they have sustainable packaging, they are clean beauty, and they use ethically sourced ingredients, which means, you know, like there's no child labor involved in getting any of their products. So, so I'm just really drawn to them as a company because of their values. They have beautiful eyeshadow palettes, but they're kind of pricey. So it's $58 for a 12 shade palette. So I'm interested specifically in the Joshua Tree palette, which is all matte and pretty colorful. And the Rose Quartz palette, which has some mattes and shimmers and is more subtle tones and um, kind of more my everyday style. Okay, next up on my higher end list is Ofra Cosmetics. And um, I want one of every single lip product that they make. So they have liquid lips, they have lip gloss, they've got this like cream souffle sort of vibe lip. And I want one of everything in every shade. I do not have enough cruelty-free lip products. The majority of my lip products are not cruelty-free or vegan. And so that's one area where I really have to do kind of a complete overhaul on, on my collection. Okay, and then I also have been talking so much about Sen Organics lately, and that's because I tested out their foundation, and they actually are sending me a full-size bottle of their foundation, which I appreciate so, so much, and um, it's just awesome. It's their Skin Silk Foundation, so highly recommend that. But there are other products from them that I'm also interested in. Um, they also sell these little petite lipsticks that I want every single color of, and they are smaller than a regular size lipstick and they're like 1050, I want to say, which is a really good deal. And um, they have a beautiful shade range and I'm intrigued by them because I almost never go through an entire lip product. So this is like half the quantity or, or whatever percentage of the quantity. And then along with Sen, in kind of the more affordable high end route, um, I have Tower 28. So they have a huge emphasis on sensitive skin. And if you know me, you know that I'm really sensitive to a lot of different ingredients, especially fragrance in any of my products tends to have a bad reaction with my skin and my skin is really dry. And so their products uh, appeal to me because they're a clean beauty option with that sensitive skin emphasis and they're cruelty free. So um, specifically, I wanna try their Shine On Lip Jelly Lip Glosses. And um, I also want to try their Luminous Tinted Balm in Magic Hour. It's just a cream product. I, I think the color looks beautiful. It's something I'm really drawn to, kind of that more subdued pinky tone. All right, and then last up in this high-end category is another brand that I consider, like Sen and Tower 28, to be a little bit more of an affordable high-end line. So this is a PYT. And they, like I said, are a little more affordable to begin with. But then on top of that, for your first order, you get 30% off your full order. And that is like 
an amazing offer for just signing up for emails. And I would say from PYT, the things that appeal to me the most are their day to night eyeshadow palettes. And they have a warm version and a cool version. And they have like six shadows and then they have this bigger section over on the left hand side of the palette that they say are more shadows, but also they look like they could potentially be like blush or highlighter shades. And their pan sizes are big enough that you could probably get like a fluffier powder brush in there. They kind of look boring online, but I've seen some eyeshadow looks that people have made with them online and I am blown away every single time I see someone with those two eyeshadow palettes on their eyes. I just am like in shock at how beautiful they turn out. So switching over to the affordable slash drugstore side of things here, I have four brands that I'm really intrigued by and the first is Catrice. And I specifically want to look at their Hydro BB Cream from Catrice. I just, I like a light coverage foundation base. A lot of you know this already. For especially an everyday look, I don't want something heavier. This is a supposedly fairly clean ingredient wise formula and it's vegan and cruelty free. So I haven't ever tried anything from Catrice and so... I figure why not just try out one of their products to start and see how I like it from there. The second brand is Pacifica. And again, they're a relatively clean, affordable brand. So they are pretty choosy about their ingredients in comparison to especially a lot of other drugstore brands. And I have never tried anything from this brand. And honestly, they have a pretty huge line and they also sell skincare, hair care, sun care, tons of stuff. And so I have not been able to narrow down my list to something I want to start with for this brand, but I'm just overall intrigued to see what they have to offer. Okay, and then third here on my affordable list is Flower Beauty. And for a while, I was hearing a lot about Flower Beauty, and I kind of feel like the enthusiasm has died down a little bit, but they have two products in particular that I really want to try. So the first is the Petal Pout Lip Mask, and I specifically am interested in the color Sangria. I've seen it recommended in that particular color by a couple people here on YouTube, and then um, also it's just not like anything else I have in my collection. So it's kind of more of that berry tone, but it's sheer, and the only berry tone stuff I have are like very... Uh, you know, full coverage matte lips. And then the second thing from Flower Beauty that I'm curious about are their blush balm color drops. And specifically, I would like the shade Pinch. And I think that this would be a good way for me to kind of start exploring some drugstore cream blushes in the cruelty free space. Okay, and then last up here is kind of a cheat because um, I have used ColourPop products plenty of times. So this is not a new brand to me per se, but um, I've only ever tried their eye and lip products. I've never tried a single complexion product from them. And I'm really intrigued by the Pretty Fresh line. The Pretty Fresh line appeals to me because it's a hydrating hyaluronic acid based line. And one of my all time favorite products is this uh, foundation from Neutrogena. And um, I'll pop it here on the screen. It's a hydrogel foundation and the formula is like nothing else I've ever tried, but it is not cruelty free. So I am hoping that that tinted moisturizer in particular from the Pretty Fresh line from ColourPop is going to be a good comparison. And if that doesn't work, I might also try out the Pretty Fresh foundation because again, it's that more like gel hydration formula that for me, particularly in the winter, is so important for my skin to be healthy and to look good in makeup. All right, so there you have it. That's kind of my wish list in terms of brands that I'm interested in looking into as I transition to cruelty free. So thank you so much for joining me on this cruelty free journey. And if you wanna to continue to follow along, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you enjoyed this video today, please like this video and comment down below because it really helps me as a smaller creator on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.